Hey everyone, how's it going? It is I, the real Randy Chavez, coming at you today with the VV Omi update video. Guys, if you're new, welcome, if not, welcome back, I love y'all. Everyone say hello to Dashi. Hello, Dashi. Commenting, liking, and subscribing is a free way to help support the channel. Non free ways are Patreon and smashing that super thanks button down below. And uh, become a member, there's lots of perks. Also, Steve, Canon Photography, there's only one more of these left. Anywho, uh, we'll start with the Omi for right now. And Omi is actually up 0.2% on the day for the first time in what seems like weeks. Um, now, however, comma, it is only up 0.2%. We're still only at 629,000 in volume. It is at 000811. So it's staying steady at that 0008 mark. Um, Crypto Rain was on the channel before. It was on the round the Yakomi verse with me, uh, Dr. Stuff, and, uh, and Jordan Riz. And he's like, listen, anywhere between here and, you know, where, where we were before, 0055, this is where he's buying. He said anywhere actually at, at 001 and below is his buy point. So I was like, okay, me too. Once New Year Comic Con is over, I'll be back to buying more Omi. Um, we had a conversation of like, what would you put, uh, would you sacrifice for Omi? Would you go put funds into after Omi blows? So sacrifice for Omi, I'd, <laughs> I just had uh, four waffles was my dinner because I got 72 waffles for $11 hairs and I am damn proud of that. Um, just save as much money as you can. Uh, now, mostly a lot of my extra funds are actually going into VV, and I'll, I'll get into the VV stuff today in a second, but eventually when Omi does Moon, how do I diversify? Well, I'll get some undervalued Pokemon cards, and then I will get probably a bunch of Tesla. I'll rebuy the Tesla that I had sold to get more Omi originally, and we'll come full circle. But speaking of, like I said, Omi, or VV, on all of the things that I've bought this last week, uh, most recently, it was an Ana. So Ana, it's a first appearance of her. There is less than a thousand of her. It's insane how little there are and how cheap she is. So she is a secret rare, so you do need her to complete the set. Uh, there is 999 of her, which actually means 909 because VV keeps. Uh, they happen to keep 90 of them. And the floor price is about 78 gems, which is a little bit higher than Scar, which I thought was interesting. She's apparently a little more popular right now. And the... Floor on the sub 100s was like 159, and I saw her number 74. Was it 78? Nope, 74 for 100 gems. Boom, sniped it. It was great. But it was 100 gems. And every now and then, I just I find a good deal, most of the times on the Marvel Mighties, and I just find a good deal and I snipe it, and it's great. Um, but today, however, there was a lot of different things that you could do. There's a lot of things that you couldn't do. For the first time, it was seemed like a year or so, the market was actually down. Like, you couldn't buy or sell anything. And I felt like such a crackhead. I was like, oh, give me the market. Because it wouldn't it wouldn't load. I couldn't check the prices on the on anything. I couldn't check the price. I really, I told my woman newest Wales today, I was like, hey, listen. Uh, he was asking me about my, my, my Princess Anna. I was like, you know, you buy an Anna without me? I was like, well, listen, I, I tend to check out her. Uh, well, I, I tend to check out the the most recent Disney drop, uh, which the, the Frozen one, the uh, Lion King one, uh, the Encanto one, and the Moana one. I think all of those are, are really, really undervalued. Um, people are, I feel like, sleeping on a lot of them, on, on most of what's in those sets. So I, I go and I check them every now and then to see if I, I find one that's really, really good. And um, then I told him a bit later about, hey, you have Oscar the Grouch and... Um, and Cookie Monster, right? He's like, yep, both sub-100s. Like, of course you do. He's a sub-100 junkie. But you take a look, and Oscar the Grouch Rare is at $42. And the Rare... Uh, well, I'll do the price uh, price match first. So Oscar the Grouch Rare is $42. Whereas Oscar the Grouch, the secret rare, the golden Oscar the Grouch, is $29, $30 even. So, I mean, for me, <laughs> I would go and... Uh, take my Oscar the Grouch, and uh, I, I would convert it. If, if I was just buying one, I, I would, I'd would i probably just buy the, the Secret Rare. Um, but there's been no distinction about saying, hey, how many of these you can mint. Because if you take a look at the, the amount of mints there are, all right, Oscar the Grouch Secret Rare, there's 2832 left. Out of 4,444, there's 2832 left. And that's for the Secret Rare. So the rare should have that much, but should have a lot less. But it doesn't. It has 3,564, which means that either 
they this hasn't caught up from this morning. And what that means is that when I say this hasn't caught up, it had the market was taken down this morning because if you had one uh, Oscar the Grouch, you could mint as many golden Oscar the Grouches as you wanted. You had one person, I think, mint like 42 of these. Now, obviously, that's a glitch. Obviously, that's an exploit. You're not supposed to do that. So, of course, they had to shut the market down If and, and basically recall all of those golden Oscar the Grouches. And that kind of messed up the numbers a little bit. But now what I've seen is that there are a lot more rare Oscar the Grouches than there are uh, for the secret rares. And that means either one of two things. Either the numbers haven't caught up yet, or you can go and buy an Oscar the Grouch mint a golden Oscar the Grouch, sell the regular Oscar the Grouch, buy another one on the app, and then remint that again. So I don't know if they're going to have to go and redo this again um, because it hasn't been clear if you can go and buy one off of the market. And if that one has already been used for minting, th there's no distinction. And I haven't had anyone message me saying that they couldn't mint. Oh, I bought this Oscar the Grouch off the market and I couldn't, I couldn't craft it into a golden one. Like, like, nobody's messaged that to me yet, and I guarantee you if they had it like that, I would have had multiple messages like that, but they didn't, so I, I don't know if this is going to have to be um, redone again. Uh, I, I think it was a really cool mechanic. I think, unfortunately, they just kind of hecked up on the, on the execution of this, and obviously, the next time they do something like this, it won't be uh, as disastrous. It'll be a lot smoother, um, but... But yeah, so silver lining, this is a really cool thing that they could do. They could go and say, hey, for, for anything on Sesame Street, um, they could go and say, they could do a big bird uh, and not announce any utility. They could do a snuffleupagus and not announce any utility. And then suddenly, if you have big bird and snuffleupagus, you can mint for, for a golden one. I think that's a really cool idea. I think it's a way to incentivize people to try to buy some from the store, even though they made no distinction of just one mint per collectible and nothing about secondary markets like that that's kind of why i do see some people get uh eventually might a little bit hecked up on the gold and silver logo because the gold and silver logo you get like hundreds and hundreds of dollars worth of airdrops per year if you go to a physical event so if you want to go to a physical event and you prove you have a golden logo it's like okay well here's the frankenfat here's the uh, Ron English Golden Monkey cards. Here's the new Gold and Silver Vivolo. Like you're, so you're getting hundreds of dollars per year, even like a thousand, uh, depending on the prices of them. But if I had gotten, let's say if I bought one off the market right now, I think the floor is like 4430. If I go and I do that and somebody had used that already for their, for San Diego Comic Con, well, then I kind of get a little hecked up. Um, but let me see the floor of this right now. I think it's 4430. Uh, yeah, this this floor hasn't moved in quite a while, so I'm kind of okay with it right there. Uh, anywho, moving on. In other news, I was thinking the other day about, and I messaged to some other person, like, hey, what do you think about this? I'm like, oh, it's possible. I was thinking about a VB credit line. Now, you have credit cards in general that uh, there are some high-risk ones that are like 24.99%, and it's a lot. They... They offer you uh, money, but it, it's a lot. And if you don't pay it off each month, you know, that interest really, really takes a toll on you uh, as opposed to, and, and that's why they go and they give out those rewards. Like, oh, you have 4% cash back or, you know, no interest for X amount of months because when the interest does hit, you have more people not paying or only paying the minimum. And, and you know, that, that's what fuels it. And that's how they're able to give out those rewards. I think if Vivi were to do something like that, like a credit line, Let's say you find something really cool on the market. You find something that has, you know, super undervalued, sub 100, and it's like 400 bucks. And it's like, well, I have 100 gems, and I don't have the money to put in to VV to get more gems. So what do you do? Okay, well, maybe you could go and have a VV credit line. Now, how would that work? Like, how do you, why, why, why couldn't you just do that, immediately sell it, and then cash out without paying it back? Okay, well, here's a way around that. If you go and you you can only do that if you have a collectible, let's say that's worth a thousand dollars, and let's say they give you fifty to fifty percent loan to value. So if you have a collectible with the floor is worth a thousand dollars, they say, okay, we're going to hold this, and we're going to give you five hundred gems, and when you pay us back the five hundred gems, 
you'll get you'll get your collectible back. And if you don't in a certain amount of time, they either keep it or they sell it for the floor and then they refund you the gems and then net the difference. I think that's a really good way for VV to go and uh, really kind of make that money printing machine go burr. Because if, if I saw something and I was like, you know what? I don't really have a lot of money until payday on Friday. Uh, and I know I'm getting paid on Friday. I'll, I'll go and I'll borrow from myself in the future. And, you know, I'll take an extra couple hundred gems or I'll take an extra couple thousand gems, whatever it is. I think that could be really good. A lot of people on here, myself, are addicts and they will 100% blow out those credit lines. And Vivi's going to make a lot of money from that. So I, I don't know the legal ramifications for that. Um, maybe Legal Dave or whoever else can go and take care of that. But that type of thing, Vivi, especially on the interest on that, where, it's like, where they don't even have to have an interest rate. They could do a factor rate where you borrow X and you pay back Y. What could that interest, what does that mean? It's like, okay, well, instead of having a compounding accruing interest rate of 10% a year or 30%, you know, however much it is, they could just say, okay, well, you're going to borrow 500 gems and you're going to pay back 525 gems. And you could do that over X amount of months, whatever it is. Or you could do it, you know, prepayment discount. You could do it over the course of two months and you only have to pay back, you know, 515 gems, whatever it is. I just think that type of thing is going to be, that's a way to lock collectibles up. It's a way to stake them. And that's a way to make sure that Vivi doesn't get screwed. Okay, if somebody doesn't want to pay back, boom, sell. Sell it for the floor. Uh, and then Vivi makes some money, and then they give back the person the, the gem, the difference. You know, if they bar, if they get something fifty percent loan to value, they get five hundred gems for something that's worth a thousand dollars. They're supposed to pay back five fifty, five, you know, whatever it is. They sell it. Let's say they make nine hundred dollars on the deal. Okay, well, minus out that five fifty, um, they just give them back the uh, those three hundred something gems. So I think, I think this could be really good. Um, comment down below if you think that's a good idea. I think it is a great idea for Vivi. For some of the people with a little bit more, you know, kind of have that gambling or addict issue, maybe not, but that makes VV money, I'm all for it. So something really interesting was brought to my attention recently, and it was WWE. Now I know they went with, you know, Dana White's company and now they kind of own it, but when we're talking about the television rights deal, especially in America, that is up for grabs. As of late, WWE will not be getting the $300 million per year. Uh, for SmackDown on Fox. So the word is that Fox still wants to keep some, but they're only willing to pay a lower price to do so. Um, I think Fox is stupid. Anyway, it says, uh, the Wrestling Observer notes that the two other entities that are now actually fighting to get WWD to jump onto their brand are either Amazon or Disney. So Amazon's a little bit of a weird one because they've been trying to increase the, their just, uh, not product, yeah, the, their their live streaming product like for, forever um sports content um they they have a bunch of things that nobody really watches they're they're really kind of struggling in that area and having someone having new product come out every single week would be really good for them the only downside with that is that you know in order to to have amazon prime you have to you have to pay for it and wrestling fans are not going to pay for that wrestling fans are not going to go and be like yeah i'm not paying y'all x amount of dollars a month to watch wrestling uh, especially when they could just watch it on their website, the WWE thing, for, um, for for a smaller price than what you would pay for Amazon Prime. Disney, however, they've actually had conversations with WWE back before SmackDown joined Fox. So this was many moons ago. But the negotiations did not lead to anything, which is why they weren't considered for very long. However, comma, WWE is now proving to be more valuable than ever because they run weekly, all year long, and they're also not victims of writer strikes or massive overhead like normal shows are. This means that WWE programming could help to give regular content to a brand in a time when new content is sorely needed over running reruns, again, because of that writer strike. So if Disney gets WWE to join, it's likely SmackDown will be part of the ABC network, not move to ESPN, mostly because Disney would profit entirely from having it run on ABC versus having to share the profits with Hearst, which are minority owners of ESPN. If that happens, you could potentially see the greats, John Cena, Rey Mysterio, Dominic Mysterio. You have all the muscle mommies on there from the divas as well. And they could go old school. They could go Lita. They could go Trish Stratus, Undertaker, Kurt Angle. That'd be amazing if they had a Perk Angle uh, variant. You know, you could go and get Chavo and Eddie Guerrero, Los Guerreros. You, I, I'm not going to mention somebody. Oh, I, 
good wrestlers. Anyway, you could be able to get all of these different people if Disney gets this contract. So on Vivi, I think that that would do massively. That that could be the sports category that we're all kind of waiting for. We're waiting for sports in general, but I think anime is the new vertical that comes in before sports, but that's, that's just me. We have Mr. Champ that posted on the X saying, it's not necessarily replacing, it's more of practicality and durability. And he's talking about a candle go turning into a light bulb, a horse turning into a car, newspaper to a laptop, dollars into Bitcoin, and physical collectibles to digital collectibles. And I, I think I went, over, I went over this the other day on a live stream. I was watching a TikTok of a video from 30 years ago. It was a news station covering that Burger King had just put in credit card machines onto their, onto their store. And you have a bunch of people that were, some were boomers, you know, some were you know, part of that best generation, but, but a lot of people were Gen X, a lot of people were, were younger. And I was like, I, why, why do you need to have a credit card machine in here? You don't have like $2 to go and, and, and put on the, um, you know, in your pocket to pay for a burger. And some people were like, listen, this is too slow. I want to be able to give my money real quick and, and that's it. I want to have to wait for a machine to do a transaction, verify electronically. It's stupid. But nowadays they're they're everywhere, and you know that it's very similar to what I've been seeing with Bitcoin. Oh, Bitcoin's so slow. It's doing this, and I, I mean we pretty much have a cashless society already. And I think that at some point we go and we, we're and, and again Bitcoin yeah is slow. You have to wait for a bunch of lot confirmations. Bitcoin network is is slower. Um, Omi's very very, it's very very quick. You get it just like that on Immutable X on layer two. It's so. Uh, it's just kind of food for thought, something to think about. Oh, uh, Ken Gwynn, who's been on the podcast, he's CEO of Republic. They had just posted that you asked, we delivered, invest with one tap now on Android. Getting started is easy. Download the Republic app. I'm going to get him on the podcast again to talk about this. Also, um, McFarlane Toys, I had, someone had brought to my attention that uh, their platform's earnings potential, as far as their secondary market, they get 10% from secondary sales. So I don't want to hear it when someone's like, oh, the fees, the selling fees are too high. A lot of VV stuff is just two and a half percent on the secondary market. Obviously, Disney, Marvel and a bunch of other ones are, you know, combined to be eight and a half percent. But if other places are charging 10 percent and VV's max is eight and eight and a half percent and a lot of times just two and a half percent. I'm I'm really liking VV. Oh, shout out to Frank. Uh. Shikone, who has minted a mega fish. So there's a lot of really interesting things with fish happening. I did this in a live stream the other day. If you have a fish, you'll have a promo code where you're going to get one on Vivi. Again, if you have a fish, link them down below to mint a fish, you will be able to go and get a promo code to redeem on the Vivi app for a fish. I think that's in a couple weeks. So they're excited about that. Oh, and we also got, uh, we're getting Yoda here in the comic books over on, uh, on VV saying, to some, he was a legend, to others, a teacher. Now Yoda is all but forgotten, living in exile and haunted by the past. Star Wars Yoda number one digital comic drops with five cover rarities in blind box, waitlist format on 20 September at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And he's not the only one. So there's a couple of things going on here. I didn't talk about the Aladdin drop yet. So Aladdin is dropping on 22 September. Oh, that's a couple of days from now. Wow, we really knew about this uh, for a ways away. If you go and you take a look at that, um, you're, the VV will make a couple hundred thousand on it. I was like, well, Chavez, how do you know? Um, because Tinkerbell didn't didn't sell out. Why, why would Aladdin sell out? Well, Aladdin has three different characters. Tinkerbell had the same character in three different poses. Aladdin has Aladdin, Genie, and Jasmine. And the genie looks really freaking good. I mean, they all look good, but the genie goes and has, you know, the dance, the animation and the sound. And um, I, I really wish it would have had Robin Williams voice. Mm, that would have been so great. Um, but maybe another time, maybe in the Vivi-verse. Chat GPT. Anywho, um, that'll be a nice couple hundred thousand. For Vivi's got a lot of content dropping this week. So they have that. They have the Yoda comic. Um, and then they have, they have another comment. A comic tomorrow, which I don't see doing well at all. It's it's a Captain America comic, uh, which which are normally I, I like, but it's just the first appearance of Win of Winter Soldier, Bucky Barnes. Um, 
you know, this is 2004. I don't think anyone really knows about this comic. And it's $10. <laughs> um, it's, 10, it's $10 for 10,000 of these editions. I don't... I, maybe they'll surprise me. I don't see too many people buying this at all. Uh, comment down below if you're going for it. Now, Yoda? I'll go for Yoda because I want to read that comic. It's cool. Um, Aladdin? I'll go for Aladdin because it, it looks great. Um, and I think a lot of those other Disney drops, like, like I said, you had the Simba at $30. That's stupid. Anyway, moving on here. In the macro, we have Watcher Guru reporting that the judge declines SEC's request to inspect Binance US. So that is very good for crypto at large. I'm very excited about that. Um, anyway, that's it for me today. Please comment, like, and subscribe. Comments are good for the YouTube algorithm. Everyone say bye-bye to Dashi. Bye-bye, Dashi. Love you guys. Meow, meow.